Good morning, church family. So good to see all of you in church this morning. You sound pretty excited to be here. I heard a lot of chatter and laughing, and it's good for brothers and sisters to meet together and greet each other in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We also want to welcome those who will be joining us on Facebook. May God bless each and every one of you as you worship together with us today. We draw your attention to the registration pads uh, for both our guests and our regular church members. Please register your attendance. If you are a guest visiting, give us your name and email and, or telephone number and we'll get in touch with you. We promise we don't share that information with anyone else. I do have uh, two announcements. First, we do have a session directly after church today. It's an important one. Uh, the session is going to vote on the mission study, which this church completed in record time, thanks to our taskmaster, Lee, He's sitting there in the corner, and uh, which, are, which is great news because now you folks can move on. But the sad news I have is that Mary Jane Coltard passed away on Thursday evening. She was 97 years old. In fact, her birthday was last Sunday, 97. And we will have a visitation this Tuesday from 1 to 2 o'clock right here in the church, followed by a funeral service, followed directly by an intern in the Old Glade Cemetery. So that's this Tuesday, 1 to 2, the visitation, the funeral at 2 p.m. May God bless us as we worship together. We invite everybody to stand for our call to worship and we will read the prayer of confession together. Sorry, I mean we'll do the call of worship together. We gather with joy for Easter continues. Doors have been opened and fear has turned to peace. We celebrate the presence of the risen Christ among us. Doubts are erased and uncertainty turned to faith. Let us rejoice and be glad. We offer prayers and praise with humble and hopeful hearts as we worship the Lord. Remain standing by singing together hymn number one, Holy holy, holy, and we'll sing the first, the third, and the fourth stanza.
Remain standing and we will read together in unison our prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess our trust in you can weaken and we become anxious about many things. We talk about love, but we fear those who differ from us. We cling to our personal agendas and neglect your call to serve others, especially when that service costs us something. Forgive us through the power of your Holy Spirit Rekindle our passion to follow you in all we do. Amen. Hear the words of the risen Christ. Jesus says, peace be still. And today we can receive the forgiveness and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ because he has risen among the dead and is alive forevermore and is present right here with us today. So grace and peace to you all and share that grace and peace with your brothers and sisters in church today. All right, church family, back to our seats. And we invite you to turn to hymn number 263, 263, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name, and we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Hymn 263. Let's all stand together.
remain standing for our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed found in the Presbyterian Hymnal, page 35. Let's say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Before we have our morning prayer and the Lord's Prayer, we'd like to remind you that we do have prayer requests in the bulletin each week. We do have a list of our shut-ins out in the foyer. A lot of those folks um, are delivered meals on Wednesday. And we also offer special prayers for anyone who has any special prayer request. The pastor will be up front here, and you're welcome to come, and I'll be happy to pray with you. But take those, remember those names in your personal prayers during the week. Let us pray. Thank you, loving God, for your renewing presence in our lives. And for the many ways you make yourself known to us, in words spoken in peace, in actions that embody love, in creation that awakens wonder within us, and in worship that inspires faith and understanding with memories of the grace you have shown us. We pray that all people will come to know the life-giving joy we have found in Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray for those who are feeling fearful, worried, or overwhelmed in these days of economic pressure and uncertainty. Lord Jesus, reveal to them your risen presence. We pray for those who face violence and unrest each day in countries around the world and in our own community. Lord Jesus, reveal to them your risen presence. We pray for our national, state, and municipal leaders as they seek solutions to the challenges in our common life. Give them wisdom and compassion. And Lord Jesus, reveal to them your risen presence. We pray for our congregation, for all the churches in our community, and for Christians around the world, especially those facing persecution and danger. Lord Jesus, reveal to them your risen presence. We pray for our neighbors, especially those struggling with rising costs and scarce housing, and those who know rejection and discrimination. Lord Jesus, reveal to them your risen presence. We pray for those who are ill, in pain, 
or in grief. In particular, we remember before you those individuals and situations that are on our hearts and minds today. And we'll take just a few silent moments for you to lift up those individuals and situations. Amen. Lord, bring to all those we have lifted in prayer comfort and strength and reveal to them your risen presence. Hear our prayers today and use us in ways to respond to those around us with the love we see in Jesus Christ our Lord who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In this season of Easter, we celebrate God's precious gift to us in Christ dying on the cross and rising again from the grave. As we present our gifts to God today, May they generously reflect God's goodness to us and the hope that we have in our hearts that God will bless those gifts and multiply them to spread his love around the world. The ushers will now wait upon us for our tithes and offerings. May we give cheerfully and generously to God. stand together and sing the doxology. Let us pray. 
generous God, thank you for the hope we claim through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Bless these gifts we bring so that they may spread that hope to all the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our scripture reading today is found in the Gospel of John, John chapter 21, and reading from verses 1 through 17. That is found in your Pew Bible on page 1687. John chapter 21, reading from verse 1. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night, they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish. 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lamb. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, 
do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for revealing yourself in the person of Jesus Christ, your one and only Son and our Savior and Lord. Please help us now as we study together this passage in John chapter 21. As we listen to your word, we ask that you cause your word not only to touch our hearts, but also to affect the way we live. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. It has been three exciting and eventful years since Peter first started following Jesus. Peter had first met Jesus while fishing with his brother Andrew. On that occasion, Jesus had called both of them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Peter obeyed the call of Jesus and left everything, wife, home, and the family fishing business to follow Jesus. Picking up the story in John chapter 21, we discover that the last few weeks in Peter's life have been an emotional roller coaster. Peter has gone from the giddy heights of Palm Sunday where he expected Jesus to be crowned as king to the utter depths of despair on Good Friday when Jesus is nailed to the cross. Then comes Easter Sunday. And Peter is again swept up to a mega high when the news, with the news of the resurrection. In John chapter 21, Peter is back home on the familiar shores of Galilee, also known as the Sea of Tiberias or Lake Gennesaret. I do not know if you are aware of this, but Peter and some of the disciples are from this region of Galilee. They are northerners. Things had gotten much too hot down south in Jerusalem. And so they decided to get out of Dodge and go up north to be among family and friends and in familiar surroundings. However, Peter and the disciples were not just going home to be back in familiar surroundings. They went back to Galilee in obedience to the command of Jesus. When the two women at the tomb on Sunday morning encounter an angel, the angel tells the woman, go quickly and tell his disciples, he is arisen from the dead and is going ahead of you to Jerusalem. I mean, I've been going to Galilee. Then in Matthew 28 verse 10, the woman bump into the resurrected Jesus. And he tells them, go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Peter and the other disciples 
are back in Galilee. Doing what Jesus told them to do. They are waiting for Jesus. Waiting on the Lord. Why is it so hard for Christians to wait on the Lord? Like the person who prayed, Lord, please give me patience and give it to me today. Psalm 40 verse 8 says, I wait patiently for the Lord. Isaiah 30 verse 18 says, Blessed or happy are all who wait for him. Peter is having a hard time waiting on the Lord and decides to go fishing, taking the other disciples with him. What is the result of this not waiting on the Lord? Peter and the disciples experience a night of defeat. If you like Charlie Brown cartoons, there's a great comic script where Charlie Brown is complaining because his team always loses the game. Lucy tries to console him with the words, remember Charlie Brown, you learn more from your defeats than you do from your victories. To which Charlie Brown responds by saying, then I must be the smartest guy in all the world. There is a lot of truth in Lucy's statement. We do learn more from our defeats than we do from our victories. Because it is only in the university of hard knocks where we experience defeat and failure and how to build characters with moral and spiritual backbone. Peter had left everything to follow Jesus. But now in John chapter 21, Peter is returning to his old way of life. The way of life he had before he met Jesus. And this decision of Peter leads to failure and defeat. John 21 verse 3 says, That night they caught nothing. How frustrated Peter and the disciples must have felt. They spend the whole night fishing and end up defeated. That night they caught Nothing. Jesus said in John 15 verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches, without me you can do nothing. Disobedient to the command and will of God, Peter and the disciples accomplished nothing. The fishing trip was a total failure. The story is told of a new, newly married couple who sat down right at the beginning of their marriage and decided how their marriage was going to work. The husband said to his new wife, 
In our marriage, who is going to wear the pants in the house? Are you going to wear the pants? Or am I going to wear the pants? And you just tell me which pair of pants to wear. You know, marriage is supposed to be an equal partnership. But in most marriages, there's always one person who happens to be the most dominant personality. Therefore, this young couple came to agreement at the beginning of their marriage. They decided that in their marriage, the husband would make all the major decisions and the wife would make all the minor decisions. The young wife said, I am totally fine with that arrangement. Twenty-five years later, as they celebrated their 25th wedding anniversary, somebody asked the husband, what is the secret of your long and lasting marriage? The husband revealed to his friend the secret of their 25 years of married bliss. He told his friend, when we first got married, we made a pact with each other. I would make all the big decisions and the wife would make all the small decisions. The husband's friend said, well, it certainly looks like it has worked out well for the both of you. It certainly has, replied the husband. In all our 25 years of married life, I have yet to make one major decision. (laughs) After experiencing a night of defeat and failure, Peter and the disciples face a day of decision. John 21 verse 4, 21 verse 4 says, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. Finally, it is morning. It is no longer dark. The light has come. The disciples fish all night and catch nothing. When the morning comes, Jesus tells them to cast their nets on the right side of the boat. The disciples obey the command and direction of Jesus, and the Bible says they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Think about that. A few minutes with Jesus in control of your life can accomplish more than a whole night of hard work. That is the lesson Jesus would like all his disciples to learn. Everything recorded in John chapter 21 is déjà vu for Peter. The amazing miracle of catching the 153 fish remind Peter of his first encounter with Jesus. On that occasion, Peter has been fishing all night, but catches nothing. Jesus says to Peter in Luke 5, verses 4 through 6, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the net. Peter decides to obey Jesus. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. Both of these miracles are almost identical. 
However, this first encounter with Jesus marks the occasion when Peter is called to follow Jesus. The Sea of Galilee holds so many memories for Peter. Peter recalls the occasion when Jesus tells him to go and catch a fish, to open the fish's mouth. And in the fish's mouth, you'll find some money. Take that money and go and pay your taxes. I wish I could do that. I did my taxes on Friday. <laughs> Peter recalls the occasion when a dangerous storm arose on the Sea of Galilee. The disciples were fearful for their lives. And they wake up Jesus. And they ask him to do something. Jesus stands up and calms the raging storm with just a few words. Peace be still. The fire of burning coals on the seashore reminds Peter of another fire of burning coals in the courtyard of the high priest. That is one memory Peter dreads recalling. That was the dark night that Peter denied Jesus three times. When Jesus invites Peter and the disciples for breakfast, it reminds Peter of the numerous occasions he and the other disciples shared food and fellowship with Jesus. In fact, the story in John chapter 21 is not so much about fish and fishing as it's about food and fellowship. Jesus is inviting Peter and the disciples to come and share with him the food that he has prepared and provided with his own life and death. The disciples are all sinful men. They are all cowards who denied Jesus and ran away. They all broke their vows and commitments to follow Jesus. They have all forsaken Jesus and returned to their old way of life. But despite all that the disciples have done, Jesus loves them and he forgives them. And he had desires above all else to restore them to fellowship with himself. That is what Jesus desires for every one of us. When we sin, when we are cowards and deny Jesus, when we break our vows and commitments to follow Jesus, Jesus still loves us and forgives us and desires above everything else to be in fellowship with us. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We will close worship by turning together to hymn number 837. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. Hymn number 837. Shall we all stand?
like to remind you that there is a session immediately following worship today. And if there's anyone who would like special prayer, I'll be down front to pray with you. Let us pray. Go in faith with the peace of Christ within you. May God's resurrecting love direct your footsteps and may the Holy Spirit empower you to be Christ's faithful witnesses in a sinful and lost world. And God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all today, tomorrow, and always. Amen.